to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Roll call. Uh, Ms. Kovacs, if you would do that for us, please. Sure. Joe Giddens? Here. Cheryl Hancock? Here. Anita Jagosinski? Here. Kate Meyer. Mayor is excused. Tim Mettinger as well. Colin Trivet? Here. Lisa Collins? Here. And Gary Dunlap? Here. Okay, thank you. With five of the seven school board members present, I would declare a quorum. Approval of the agenda. I an would note that the agenda has been posted, distributed, and sent to the local media. With this in mind, are there any changes to the agenda at this time? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as published. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor of approving the agenda as published, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Public participation. Is there anyone who wishes to address, address the board this evening relative to any item? We ask that a five minute time limit per person be followed. Please come forward, state your name, address, and topic to be addressed. And I would note at this time the pork feed presentation. So if anyone else wants to make a presentation, they're welcome to come forward, but we'll start with this. Mr. Clark and Mr. Daly. John Daly, N5828, Lakeview Court, East Town, Alaska. Thank you. Jay Clark, W7312, Sylvester Road. <laughs> it's our honor tonight to kind of report out to you um, our Pork Feed for Education event this year on Homecoming Friday. Um, we want to thank all of our major sponsors this year, um, Alter Federal Credit Union, Associated Bank, Community Credit Union, Firefighters Credit Union, River Bank, and Seven Bridges. Uh, we sincerely appreciate all their support they've given to us over the years. We'd uh, also like to thank all the guests that we served this year. It was another great event despite the weather, um, the soggy second half anyway. Great game though that we won. Um, and uh, um, thank, thank all of them for supporting this activity. Tonight we're gonna, go, go. Thank you. I'm trying to get going, I won't have a yeah, chance to talk. We served over 900 meals this year, which uh, we didn't know how this was going to go because it was a non-conference game for homecoming. It was a little bit different, but uh, we're excited that uh, people came out. Um, in many factors, the weather, the uh, win-loss record of the teams, and all kinds of different things that affect uh, how successful we're going to be on that uh, night. As John mentioned, uh, we have some bank sponsors that really provide some of the funding to make this happen. We also have vendor sponsors uh, that really reduce the cost that we incur in delivering the pork feed and thereby fewer costs to us means more money uh, that we get to donate to do good things for the community. Um, as John mentioned, and he'd probably be a little bit humble on this, the many volunteers that uh, helped to make this happen. There's a, this is always a little dangerous when you call out some uh, specific people, but John needs to be on that list, uh, as does Mike Gasper, um, because without good food, uh, the pork feed would not be successful. And the final one is uh, Shirley Rozak, who uh, works as an assistant in my office, and um, Anybody who's involved in pork feed knows uh, how Shirley keeps things uh, going and in order and everybody doing what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah. And that I had her on my list too, Jay, as, as a call out, as, <laughs> as our task taskmaster, Shirley. So right. she keeps us on track. So thank her and, and all the employees that have helped with this. We especially got a lot of help from transportation. They'd go up in the stands and sell the sandwiches. One of our custodians donated, uh, brought tables for us to use. So we really appreciate all of that. It's a, it's it's organized and run by the leadership team now, but we still get the all the other employees that help us out with this. One of the benefits that comes is the sense of community that these people that volunteer, and you know that anytime you're involved in a successful uh, community activity, just how good it feels to be part of that. There's our 12-year total for the for now fifty-eight thousand dollars we've raised and given to the foundation to give back to the uh, uh, various educational programs here in Holman. 
And uh, this year we're going to present uh, to the Home and Athletics Department. Maybe we could have Mr. Bear come forward. We have actually two checks that we'll be presenting to Mr. Bear. Uh, one to the Athletics Department for $250, and the other to the Holman FFA program. Um, they run the concessions at most home games, and um, we realize that our success takes a little bit away from them, so this is a way to pay them back. And then uh, President Hancock, if you'd come forward, uh, we'd like to present the check that uh, you would be able to turn over to the Holman Area Foundation. Uh, this check uh, this year in the amount of $4,831.80. And as John said, to uh, help the foundation do good things to help students in our school district. And then if I could, uh, one outcome that's less known maybe than the dollars that are donated or the number of meals or the community sense of spirit is uh, something that happens after the pork feeds over. And um, each year we invite as our guests the um, team with which we compete uh, during the game. And the idea is uh, one of sportsmanship and that you can uh, compete um, give it all you have uh, during the game, but afterwards you can break bread um, and be a good sportsman. I read recently that in one state, they're discontinuing uh, the handshake after the football game. And um, I guess that's how they do it there. We do it differently in Holman. And uh, so West Salem was our guest after the game and we were able to witness um, appreciation and gratitude by their players as well as players talking and interacting with one another after the game. So uh, to me, that's as much a success as any other thing that we do that night. So felt that we should share that as well. So thank you again and uh, for the time here tonight. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Round, another round of applause. I know I, I have commented I was part of the foundation when we they started this and it was a great thing and it really does support the Viking Fund for Excellence which goes right back into um, the hands of educators in the district and all staff are eligible to apply for this so even transportation could do some things with those monies if grant monies apply for it food service could if they need a you know a few extra dollars um, but for the most part, it's our educators in the classroom that have applied for those grants, and we give small grants, and we know, I read not too long ago, that the average teacher spends about $1,000 out of his or her own pocket each and every year, and if we can just do a little bit to help offset that, we know in Holman we probably have the higher end of the the um, average, but um, thank you so very much for doing this and the leadership team for um, leading it, and it wouldn't happen, I think, as Jay and D John pointed out, without all the support from people. Um, so again, thank you very much. It's always a pleasure. It's always fun to come and receive this, so thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address the board at this time on any item? If not, then we'll move on mm -hmm. to recognition and thank you. The Lions two, Club. First, yeah, Mr. two recognitions and thank yous tonight. Uh, our Lions Club, we thank Lions Club for their recent donation of $500, which will fund the acquisition of document cameras for the middle school. So their continued support and generosity are greatly appreciated. I know that uh, Mr. Vogler, Principal Vogler, wished he could be here to help in that recognition, but there are conferences going on tonight at the middle school, so that is where they are at there. So. Uh, also, uh, the board on your consent agenda this evening, we include the rec recognition or proclamation for National School Lunch Week. State Superintendent Tony Evers proclaimed October 14th through the 18th this week as National School Lunch Week. The proclamation recognizes the significant contributions of school nutrition staff and the importance of a nutritious, well-balanced, school lunch to the health, well-being, and education of children. And uh, several activities will take place in the district to promote healthy eating. And so on your consent agenda, you actually have the proclamation there for you to consider approval. That is it. Okay. 
Okay, thank you very much, and thank you to those making um, the, the commitment to our school district, the Lions Club, and all of the others that do that on an annual basis. Then moving on to reports and discussion, DECA presentation. I see we have a group of young folks out in the audience tonight, and I'd like to call you forward for your presentation. And blazers, I think this is the first time I've seen the blazers. Mm. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Very business like, though. All right, thank you very much for allowing us to present to you tonight. Um, I would like to introduce to you the 2013-2014 Home and Deca Officer Team. My name is Jordan Mason and I am this year's Home and Deca President. I'm Lydia Shriver, I am the Vice President of Social Intelligence. Hi, I'm Ashley Taylor, I'm the Vice President of Leadership Development. Hi, I'm Becca Risch, I am the Vice President of Community Service. And hello, I'm Caden Janke and I'm Vice President of Finance. Right, we'd like to start you off with a little bit of information about DECA. We were established in 1974. We are 100% membership, so what that means is that if you are involved in a marketing, or you en are enrolled in a marketing class, you are a member of DECA. Some of the classes that we offer, marketing and business concepts, advanced marketing, sports and entertainment marketing, entrepreneurship. We are the largest DECA chapter in Wisconsin. It is something we take a lot of pride in. We have over 300 members. Last year at our district conference, we had over 100 members, so that was very exciting. And then the four main aspects that we focus on are our civic, social, leadership, and vocational activities. All right, I'm Lydia Schreiber once again, and I am the VP of Social Intelligence. I'm going to be talking to you more about the social aspect of our DECA chapter. Throughout the year, we do monthly socials, which include a cookout, a corn maze, a pizza social, and a cookie decorating social. We also do a, a trip to Chuck E. Cheese. Throughout the year, we also do four main big trips, which include a trip to Mall of America, which we actually took last weekend, yes, Saturday. And we also do the Sports and Entertainment Marketing Conference this year, which is something new we're trying out, and that's going to be happening in November, as well as a trip to Action City in Eau Claire and a Brewer game. And the picture on the slide is actually a picture of the trip we took last year. So once again, I'm Ashley Taylor. I'm the Vice President of Leadership Development. And I take a little bit more lead in the competitive side of DECA if students decide to take part in that. We start off our year at our district competition, which this year is January 11th at UW-Stout in Menominee, Wisconsin. And this competition is just for the role play side of competition. Then next, we go to our state competition, which is March 17th through the 20th in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, and that's where students ca can compete with their written projects. And then if they qualify at the state level, they can go to the national level, which this year is May 1st through the 7th in Atlanta, Georgia. All right, and then Austin George is our Vice President of Media Relations, and he is out on the football field tonight. So. One of our initiatives as a Home and Deck officer team was that we get more involved with our members, make sure that they're up to date with what is going on with Home and Deca. So the way that we decided to do that was we wanted to um, get involved on three social media venues. The first one you'll see is our Facebook page. The one on the right is our Instagram. That is our new one this year. Instagram is a website that is used to post pictures, so that's what we utilize that one for. And then probably our most popular is our Twitter page. The one in the middle is our homepage. We are actually, this is a little old, we have more than 70 followers now. And basically what we post on there is just what we are up to. On the left hand side we have a picture of those who competed in the, or I'm sorry, not competed, who walked in the Down Syndrome Awareness Walk. And then on the right hand side we um, just have a tweet that just said that we were walking in that in support. Right, once again, my name is Becca Risch. I am the Vice President of Community Relations or Community Service. And we try and participate in a lot of community service in our chapter in order to get our students involved throughout the community. Um, the first large event that we did this year was the Seven Up for Down Syndrome Walk, as you can see a picture of that on the screen. It was a really great time. We got to spend some quality time with Katie Sue, um, a student at Holman, and we raised about $300 for that charity, so it was a very great time. Um, last year we participated in the Ronald McDonald House Meal and the Red Out. 
which we are hoping to do again this year. And then we also do an annual fundraiser, the um, holiday meal. Excuse me, it's not a fundraiser. Um, but it, we make a meal for the senior citizens in our community. We also play bingo with them. So it's a good time to kind of connect generations. And then this year we're actually trying to um, do a new community service project for Muscular Dystrophy Association, which is DECA's main charity. And we have a, um, an individual named Logan in our community that we are going to try and raise funds for. And that will be a really great community service project if you want to keep that looking forward in the year. And then also we have the coat drive um, tomorrow. It actually starts where you can um, donate your gently used coats to families in need. And then also in that upper right hand corner there's a picture of Hayden and he has juvenile diabetes and we raised um, just over $500 for him at a Miracle Minute at one of our football games. So a lot of great things we're doing here. And in order to follow through with all these wonderful activities, we have to have the, finan the finances to back us up. And to with obtain those finances, we have multiple fundraisers that we carry through without the year, including the Packer Raffle Sale, the Flowers, Homecoming T-shirts, athletic programs, school store, DECA dances, our vending machine, and our business partnership with Ultra Fed Federal Credit Union. All right, and then um, here we have a picture of our state competitors that competed at our state conference in Lake Geneva last year. And with that, we'd like to thank you for all of your support. Um, Becca is going to be handing out a flyer to you. It is our DECA newsletter. This was sent out to all DECA members as well as their parents. It talks a little bit about us as an officer team, who they can contact if they want to get involved, any of our events, anything like that. Thank you. Do you send this out electronically or? In the mail. In the mail. And I will be handing out a second flyer, which is we ask you to help support um, us to support the district. Um, we are part of a campaign called Celebrate My Drive. Um, and it's through, um, it's, it's a national convention. And it is vote all next week and we can win up to a hundred thousand dollars for our district funds oh my granddaughter brought that home in her elementary school I think Thank you. in her folder so you must be sending it with the elementary schools okay great so any anything else or any questions for the group I just have a couple of questions. Yeah, definitely. The coat drive, where can people drop off coats? Um, we, were um, we are going to be putting out bins tomorrow, and we will have bins in each of the different schools, both the elementary schools, the middle school, and the high school. Okay. Any place in the community? or? Um, the, the bins will be at the schools. Okay. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the Packer raffle, I was going to ask about yeah. that, but I think I just glanced in here because I was walking behind a group of you coming in, and you were really like, chattering about the Packer raffle. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to put in a plug for buy some Packer raffle tickets because yeah. they really want to sell them. And they're, they'll are they probably come to your door and sell them because they're... Yeah. They, well, they, the prize is four tickets to the Packer Viking game on the 24th. So, mm -hmm. so how can people get those Packer raffle tickets? Yes. We will be selling them... We are? The drawing, yeah, the drawing is this Friday at the football game. So... So up until that time, where can people buy those tickets? Just from DECA students at the school? Okay. They can either do that or they can contact one of the advisors, either Mr. Shriver, Mrs. Bruski, or Mrs. Osgood. I know the answer. I'm just trying to get it out there. Because <laughs> Darty, Darty's not on the board anymore to ask those kind of questions. To get out there. So, okay. Um, I think we can end. Any other questions? Any other questions? All right, thank you very much for your support and allowing us to present. Thank you for all you're doing. Thanks for, thank you. yes, for all your good work. And picture time. Thank you very much. It's always fun to hear from our students. And then high school trip to South America. I think we have some more students. All right, while Mr. Kruger is pulling up um, our presentation, I'll just give you a little bit of background information. Um, we started planning our trip in the fall of 2012. Am I blocking any of you? 
and we started by having an informational meeting and we put up a vote. Mr. Kruger and I were, were trying to sponsor a trip to Peru, but that proved a little pricey. So <laughs> we ended up with Guatemala and Belize. So we actually went to Central America this past summer um, with 12 high school students. Our only stipulation was they had to be in Spanish, Spanish. two or above. Mm -hmm. So we ended up with 12, which I think is a pretty good number. This was my first experience, so I let Mr. Kruger kind of take the lead, but um, we set up a payment plan. We worked with the travel company Interact, um, and we left June 10th and came back June 18th. So we spent about five days in Guatemala and four days in Belize. And you'll see a lot of our pictures here, but Next time we go, we're going to try and talk to the weather people so that they don't send us a tropical depression. We got out on time, and we didn't have any major issues, but it was a little bit touch and go for a while there. But they're all here. They all came back, all 12. <laughs> so we're in good shape. OK, well, the Prezi is hopefully, there it is, yep. Uh, getting up. My name is Chris Greger. I teach Spanish at the high school. Also, to other students that went along with us, introduce themselves. My name is Annie Chislitsky. I'm Lawrence Jones. And I'm Neely Tyson. I'm Jennifer Olivares. Sorry, I forgot that part. OK, so there you can see this is where Prezi starts. We went in 2003, just this summer, to Guatemala and Belize. So let's hope this works. We had a lot of work into this, and it almost didn't work. But here it is. Yes, we were actually on top of a volcano right there. That's all of us, all 12 of us. Oh. Thank you, Dr. Carlson. OK. So here we are again on top of the volcano. And here we are with some of our friends that we met while we were there in Antigua at a daycare. And it kind of comes together in global connections. All right, and so here we go. We start in the parking lot of Holman High School. <laughs> uh, June 10th, the first day of summer school, we started here. And then we made our way up to Minneapolis Airport. Uh, no problems whatsoever. And then in the airport, we waited. <coughs> we did a lot of waiting <laughs> in airports this trip. And we finally got on our 737, and everyone was happy. We're ready to go with smiles, maybe little jitters. <laughs> Yes, some shy people do. <laughs> and then we left from Minneapolis all the way down to Guatemala. We did stop in Atlanta. And we, uh, Miss Olivares took really good notes on the trip, and we had a two-hour delay in Guatemala. So we got uh, in, in Atlanta because there were storms in Guatemala. So we got to Guatemala very, very late, like at 12 at night. And so the first thing we wanted to do after traveling was to sleep. And so we stayed not in hotels, but we stayed with families, pardon me, in Antigua. And so these are actual homes that we stayed in. The students were paired up in either groups of two or three. So we were hoping that they would have to use their language a little bit more if we threw them into a family. I don't know how successful we were, but I think they enjoyed themselves. Well, they had to use a little at least, <laughs> at least try. And so we were finally in Antigua. This is the city of uh, Antigua. Um, it was founded in 1546. I was reading, so it's old. <laughs> it's old. And so yay, we were finally there. And Antigua is surrounded by three volcanoes. And that's just one of them. I think it's the Agua, Volcán de Agua. And so our very first day, each day we met at this school. It's called Tecum Uman. And from there, it was kind of our meeting point. And then we went on our daily excursions. And the first day was just a walking tour in, of the city. And this is our, our guide, Don Lionel. And he, he patiently explained everything and, and made some jokes and made everything pretty fun. Uh, here we're in a Mayan museum of Mayan artifacts. And there we all are outside of it. Here we are in the downtown. This is the um, city hall of, of Antigua. Um, and we got to go in and tour. If you look up here on the second floor, this is where we were. Um, this is the this is the um, the court courtroom right here, and right next to it is the mayor's office. Um, 
And we go right up there, and there we are. And that's and this is the town square you can see from up there, up on top. You can see more volcanoes. And he took us on the walking tour, he continued, and there are so many old, old, old uh, cathedrals uh, that are in ruins. There's, there's three volcanoes surrounding the city, and there are a lot of earthquakes. And the, there's just, I can't tell you how many old buildings that were in ruins, but were still preserved. You could still walk around. It was very, very beautiful. And you can see how thick the walls are of these buildings, and they still crumbled. And you're, they're, this is supposed to be, out here is kind of like, I think our guy told us, be like a, like a, like a walkway, and people would sit in the window, and this is the Facebook of the 1500s. People go by and like, oh, how are you? You hear about this? <laughs> Did you find out about that? And so, that's how information got spread. And beneath this are catacombs, um, underground passages that actually our guide told us connected the the monastery with the convent. <laughs> Um, and Guatemala is one of the biggest producers, I think it is the biggest producer, of jade. And these are, all these down here are uncut, unfinished jade. Um, it was really nice to see. This is a, a jade processing uh, factory or um, store. And one of my favorite parts, uh, this is the, the chocolate museum. We get to learn all about chocolate. Chocolate is one of my favorite things in the world. And we tried a chocolate tea that was surprisingly good. Yep. Here Mrs. Olivares is showing off her dance moves. The, at the end of the, that day, we had dance lessons. We all had to dance. We all, we all did. But and at the end of the night, we were able to walk around. And it was very beautiful in the night, too. And then the next morning, we got up bright and early to go to a coffee plantation in this vehicle. <laughs> and it went up a mountain. <laughs> Some pretty steep parts too. We were kind of, oh, but we got there no problem. So here we are up on top, getting ready to go zip lining down the, the canyon of this mountain where there's a coffee plantation. And there goes Annie, she, old pro at it, and kept, I think there were like seven platforms. And you see this side over here? We had just zip lined from this side over to this side. You can see how deep it is down there. It's it was wow. <laughs> it was fun. And here's Miss O coming from the other side, way over here. I clearly did not put this together. I would have taken all these incriminating photos out. <laughs> <laughs> She's unfazed. And then this is us going up climbing a volcano another day. Later on that day, we went to an after-school thing, but I put it out of order. So this is another day where we got up early and we went to the volcano Pacaya. And we started down at the bottom. Oh, and did you see those horses there? Mm -hmm. Those are taxis. So as you walk up the mountain, if you don't, if you get tired, you can rent a taxi. Yeah, and the sticks that we have, we rented these sticks from the children of the town right at the base of the volcano. This is how they earn a lot of their money. So we went up and up and up. <laughs> Some people took advantage of the taxis and we finally got to the top, or what we thought was the top. This is an actual crater right here. This is a, at the edge of a crater. And it's all foggy. And I thought this was the top. And so we got there, we took a, a photo. Yay, we got to the top. And we actually had this dog follow us all the way from the bottom. We gave him a name, Pedro. <laughs> this is Pedro. Of course. Um, so behind us, this is an actual crater, um, but it's not the top. <laughs> That's the top. And you're like, oh no, you can't see it. It's all cloud covered. This is the top. And we were worried, like, this is as good as it's going to get. But then, like, five minutes later, it cleared up like that. And this white smoke right here, this is actually, this is not clouds, this is smoke coming from the mountain, uh, the volcano. It's active. And as we were walking up in the fog, you could hear it almost like thunder. And our guy said, that's not thunder. That's the volcano. <sighs> it was, wow. And you're on the side of it. <laughs> yeah. And then it did get a little breezy up there, so some people wanted to get a little warm and get into a thermal vent. 
and warm up. Everyone did. <laughs> Even Miss O. <laughs> and here's me extolling the, the beauty of the area. And here's, I think this is my favorite picture of the whole trip, is our group. Oops. Anyway, and three volcanoes in the background as we're on top of a volcano. I really like that one. And here's me <laughs> pointing the way home. <laughs> and there we go. We're on the way home with a new dog. And then once we get on the bus, <laughs> boom. <laughs> Everyone's lights out. That's fun. Okay, and this is probably one of the most, I don't know, beneficial times, I thought. We went to an after-school daycare for single mothers. Um, and we brought art supplies. Um, and school supplies and while we were there we got to take the kids we helped them a little bit with their homework and then we got to go play with them at recess mm -hmm. and so this is us taking them to um, a courtyard where we're gonna play and there we're walking down the street and everyone's kind of excited and here we're playing a game of soccer this is me I'm refereeing <laughs> everyone else is having a good time I'm not sure what's happening there. <laughs> Jump rope. Oh, okay. Yeah. Legos. Miss O is good at jump rope too. Yeah. And this kind of impacted, I think, all of us. Looking at the at the um, evaluations that our students gave us, this is one of the most popular uh, things that we did on the trip. Here, they're, after we got back from playing, they had a snack, and we got to help them, give them their snacks, and then um, we posed for group pictures. And Miss O noted that the older students, they washed the dishes for the younger students. It was pretty well self-contained. Then after that, we went to Guatemala City to look at another volcano. There's so many volcanoes. And we got on our airplane, to fly to Tikal, which is in the, the northeast part of Guatemala. And this is home to an amazing, amazing set of, of Mayan pyramids and structures. I thought it was just going to be a, a pyramid or two like this, but there's, there's so many. There's so many, you just can't see them all. So we, we walked through the, the forest. Um, taking pictures along the way, going up and around. I thought, when are we going to see the pyramids? And all of a sudden, you come out, and there they are. You're like, wow. I feel like you really kind of stumbled. I did. I felt like I stumbled onto a lost civilization. It really was neat. And it wasn't something like you had to walk around. You could walk up them, around them, on top of them. I mean, and you could go anywhere you want. It was really, really nice. There's only like one, I think, we couldn't go up. That was this one. It was very steep. We couldn't go up that one. But all the other ones, we could. And they're still doing, um, they're still uncovering other temples, other pyramids. Here we are, they're way up on the top. And then we found a friend. <laughs> Our guide was talking to some of the workers there, and they're like, oh, anyone want to hold the tarantula? And of course, <laughs> someone said yes. What a great idea. And Miss O did too. And I was going to after her, but then I said, no, time to go. I said, oh, well. <laughs> and we saw some monkeys, some lazy monkeys, just sleeping up there. And then more active ones too. Found some cool places to hang out. And really high places. This is way up on top of a, of a pyramid. I thought this would be a really fun shot. Like people would think we're hanging off the side of a pyramid, but we're all smiling. <laughs> this is not dangerous at all. It wasn't. There, there's steps going down the other end. So that was the end of Tikal. And then from Tikal, we crossed the border from right where the cursor is to this black dot into Belize. We had to cross the border by walking. And this is the immigration right here. This is the border. So we walked through it, this is us inside, and we got on the outside, the other side, into Belize, and our ride wasn't there, <laughs> so we had to wait. But she did end up coming, our guide, 
and took us to our hotel, which is actually kind of nice. This is our hotel, um, the pools, and there was plenty of opportunities to swim. This is inside one of the hotel rooms. And we keep on finding friends. Mm -hmm. yep. And so the next day, we went to uh, a school in Santa Elena in Belize. Um, this is on a Saturday morning. I wasn't sure if we, were, we, were, we had set up to tour the school, but I wasn't sure if we could see any students. But the principal and some of the teachers, they called their students and said, hey, do you want to come to school on Saturday? And lots of them did. And we got to tour the school. Um, and we saw a, a need for help, for additional support. And with Spanish Honor Society, we are planning to, to help the after-school program in Antigua and the school, too. Yeah, we got to play some games. Okay, then after that, we went for a canoe trip in a cave. This is the cave right here, and we're going to get in these canoes, and we're going to go inside. Um, in the classic period of the Mayans, the late, or the 900s, um, the Mayans went in there and actually did some human sacrifices. And there was evidence of it in there. It's kind of neat. Yeah. So here we are just before going in. This is, this is going in looking out. And then this is in there, almost inside. And here you are. The canoes went way, 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 way back. And sometimes you had to duck. And then here we are on the way, on the way back out. And so while one group was in canoeing, the other group was either swimming or ziplining. There was more opportunities to zipline. And this one, I believe, Annie, you did this one. Mm -hmm. This one was fast. Yeah, and you had to belay yourself. Oh, you had to belay yourself. Ooh, exciting. Um, then after that, we went to, um, this is a, a house. It's a regular house of a Mayan family that, uh, that our travel company had years before that you would take groups here um, and for a meal. And so we got there and this table was all set out. And then we ate and they happened to have new puppies. Oh. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, Lexi is very enamored. <laughs> oh no, a new puppy. Um, and this is, these are the, some of the kids from the house that we were at. And here we are, this is the our host that, that served us everything. And, Give us a great meal. And then from there, we went to San Pedro, off the coast of Belize. And this is what San Pedro is supposed to look like. Crystal clear, blue water, um, beautiful. And this is us waiting to get onto our bus, or I'm sorry, our boat taxi. And here we are inside, waiting. And here we are, we got off the, the boat and we're walking onto San Pedro. And here you'll see the best weather we had. Mm -hmm. This is as good as it got. Because <laughs> the next day, this is what we got. <laughs> I have to say, though, the kids were so awesome about it. They were talking yes. the whole trip about, let's just get to San Pedro. I can't wait for the beach. I can't wait for the sun. I can't wait for the crystal blue water. And they were awesome with the, the change in plans. So They, they took it in stride. Yep. And this is our hotel in the background right here. And the waves <laughs> they just kept on getting bigger. Um, <coughs> and this is, you can see oh, here the, where the waves are breaking out there. That's where the reef is, but still inside the resilient white caps. Yeah. So it was, it was bad. And so we spent a lot of time inside our hotel. I think our euchre game improved immensely. <laughs> and so the next day when we're trying to leave, it's still stormy out there. And we weren't sure if we were going to be able to leave. Um, so we can see our faces like, are we going to leave? Are we not going to leave? We're going to have to stay. Um, we were told the, the, bu the water taxi would come, and it did. We got on, and I think you can see everyone's kind of, hmm. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Is it going to be bumpy or not? But we, it wasn't that bad. It really wasn't that bad of a ride. And we got to the, the, the port, and there was a mix-up with our our transportation from the port to the airport, but we got it figured out at the last minute. We got the airport in time, but we had to improvise with a, a taxi. I had to pay for the taxi, um, but I was reimbursed by the company. But here, this is my receipt <laughs> showing that I, that I paid for it. 
and our our taxi driver said, "Call me Morgan Freeman." <laughs> it, it wasn't Morgan Freeman. It looked a lot like him. And then we were at the airport, and we still had to wait a little bit longer. But we finally got on the airplane again, and everyone's <laughs> happy to get back on, go back home. And that brings us back to here. Um, we wanted to share with you our trip um, and to say thank you for letting us do these trips. Um, it really does mean a lot for the students um, to go out and experience other cultures, other um, ways of being, other languages. It, it really is help, and we appreciate you letting us do this with our students. And if that's it for, for what I have, if, if you have any questions. Are there any questions? Well, just to say thank you for doing this, for allowing and providing the opportunity for your students, too, because we know summers are summers, and it's an extension of your school year, and we very much so appreciate that you do this. And I do know having had the opportunity, the blessing to travel internationally, it is a life-changing experience. And <laughs> even the good and the bad you see, it's nice to hear how flexible they were. But we yes, wouldn't they were expect amazing. They were anything different than from our students. So. Of course. Thank you. Yep. No, I, thank you. Yep. I saw my neighbor went with you. Um, Which neighbor? Lucy Vanderholm. Yes. I wondered why she wasn't out. She's always talking about mowing the, the grass. Oh. <laughs> the grass was long. She was vacationing. So yeah. Yeah. I'll have yeah. to ask her about her trip when I Oh, see yes, her. you should. Nice. You should. Yeah. Yep. So Very great. nice. I'm glad thank you guys you. do that. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thanks for yep. sharing that. Thanks. I think she's going to get a picture. Oh. Just kind of get okay. together there. Mr. Kruger can stand. He must have been doing a lot of the picture taking. We didn't see him in a lot of pictures. It's true. <laughs> Again, thank you very much. And thank you to the students for that leap of faith and, and doing that. So. Muchas gracias. <laughs> Okay, then the next is reading math reports. You should bring your assistant up with you. Yeah. He's my assistant. He's yes. ready. <laughs> he had to come right from football practice, and Dad was at a football game tonight, too, so he's taking it in. Uh, my name is Amy Steckley. I'm the reading specialist for the school district. And I am Doug Burge. I'm the math coordinator. And both of us work with uh, the Title I teachers that support struggling students in reading and mathematics. And uh, Wendy Savasky is our supervisor, and she oversees the Title I programming and the budget. So tonight we have the results from uh, students that we provided service to within the last school year. So this is last year's data. So we're just going to take a few minutes and just tell you a little bit about Title I programming last year. Um, the program is a partnership with families and staff, so you know we work really hard at school. We ask the parents to help support at home as well in reading and math so that all of our students can be successful in those areas. The mission of our Title I really is to use research-based interventions within the last two to three years. We've really done a nice job of looking out there to see what is research and evidence-based, and we're implementing those strategies um, when we're working with students in small groups. We're continuing using ongoing assessments to monitor the progress of those students. We always work to strive for great relationships. I mean, the, those kids love those Title I teachers and um, knowing that they're there to help support them. And um, within our Title Reading and Math program, um, we are servicing kids who are not meeting either state, federal, or our local guidelines, um, and they receive some additional services outside of their regular classroom setting. So they would be um, getting up to a half an hour of additional service in a small group or in a one-on-one -on -one in setting if it was uh, required for a more intensive intervention. Um, and then those usually are, we try not to pull um, as, as much as possible, not from the reading block or the math block, so that they're getting value-added instruction um, in those areas. So um, Title I supports children in grades K through two. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the reading program, and then I'm gonna turn the last half over to Doug. 
because I know he loves to do these kinds of things. <laughs> so um, the reading plan uh, that we have is that um, you'll see across several of these slides there's something that talks about Standard C. Standard C is a state statute that says that we must monitor the progress of all students who are not meeting established benchmarks, and those are um, set up on our criteria. And so we we screen children in kindergarten, and then we take the um, we take input from teachers in grades one and two to say who are the kids that you feel are are, are struggling in your classrooms, um, and then we also take data to you know double check to make sure that we have um, the right students that we're servicing. But we run them through a couple of different tests and to screen to see which students are the most needy um, for extra support. In kindergarten, we do upper and lower case letters. We take a look at their knowledge of sounds, some sight words. Um, concepts of print is an assessment which really talks about um, book handling like what is the the title of the book and um, where do I start reading and then if I read this word then what do I read next and next and next um, they have to like, recognize things like periods and, and question marks um, you know what's where the print you know the, the, is it upside down or backwards I mean there's lots of tricky things that we throw at them to really see what they know about how a book works and the running records, which are a, uh, a book that the children have to read to us, and then there's questions that we ask them to see what they remember about those stories. So that's kind of what kindergarten talks uh, works with. And then you also see some things that say sentence dictation. We read a sentence or two to the, story, uh, to the students, and then they have to write that sentence, and we're looking for how many sounds do they hear in those words, and then you get a point value for certain sounds um, within those assessments. So um, that's basically the assessments that we do for literacy in, in those um, kinder and first and second. So here's a little bit of the data that you can see that, um, for students that met the criteria for kindergarten. Um, when we look at um, end of the year and how successful we were in moving students um, to mat meeting our targets for the end of the year, um, students were very strong in hearing and recording sounds and words. Um, and they we're seeing an increase in the concepts about print. It's, it's been increasing, so we're exciting to, exciting to see see that um, in our text level we had 55% of our students at target so um, a lot of these kindergartners when they came in at the beginning of the year um, when we did that first baseline assessment in January with them were non readers they you know if it said uh, um, I am hungry they would say I am hungry and I'm gonna eat a pizza and I went to Chuck E. Cheese and they didn't even realize how many words were on a page so um, this is a huge accomplishment for for kindergartners um, then when we look at first grade students, um, again, we see that the hearing and recording sounds and words and the same thing um, for, you'll see on this one we have title and we also have reading resource. Um, we did pick up at Prairie View a reading resource teacher since Prairie View is not a Title I school. Um, we did find the need though for some additional support for students so you'll see the data disaggregated a bit here. Um, but again, the strongest area for students would be the hearing and recording sounds and words, high frequency word list. The one thing that we continue to struggle and, and work on every year as, as a title program is really trying to get the whole piece to come together and that's that text level. Can they not only look at hearing sounds and words, but can they read the words and then tell what, what, about what they've read? Um, in grade two, you can kind of see the same similar data. And our middle school does service um, students as well. And for that data, we use the map, which the, it's the, um, done three times a year. Um, and we also use Ames Web and the QRI, which is, again, like our text level that we use for the elementary grades. And for middle school, here's our end of the year data. We had 51% um, meet on the map assessment and 91% meet on the QRI. Um, we had a couple students that were not included in data because they moved out of district or, or parents declined services. All right, Doug. All right. So in math, we really focus, we are just starting this year, some in the middle school. So everything from last year is in K2. And we really focus on the kindergartners and where they're at. So we screen all those kindergartners when they come in to see where they're at with some of the foundational pieces, the developmental stages in learning number, quantity, instead of just an abstract saying their numbers. There's a big difference. And so we really focus on quantity. In grades one and two, we look at data from kindergarten and then we look to screen the really the bottom half of our population to see who we can best service during grades one and two. So these assessments in kindergarten, they really focus on counting a quantity, making a quantity, all of this that really 
leads towards number sense so they can be confident and build skills as they go through the other grade levels. These foundations are critically important and they really follow through in grades one and two. The idea of combinations of five and 10 are at the root of everything that we do. And some of the teachers that have worked in title before that are in the regular classroom now are really seeing the connections with our new math program and they're pretty excited in how they see the parallels and they're seeing students that go to get the extra support having a lot more familiarity with what they're seeing in class and what they're seeing in support and that can only help our students so that's really a positive this year we're hoping to see some good results from that um, but that's just the list of the assessments and they really align to developmental stages in learning math and about number and then in the January time frame, we look at, these are the certain assessments, counting a pile of 32. It's not just counting numbers to 32, it's counting out, recognizing one-to-one -one correspondence. All of these are developmental pieces. And we look at our numbers, we're, we're seeing success with that, maybe not where we wanna get to with the hiding assessment, that's more of conserving number and not seeing something but knowing it's there. And that's developmental, and that just tells us we need more work with some students in that area. And they will continue on in their development. And then first grade, that same thing. The hiding assessments, changing numbers, combination trains to 20. Those are all building the more or less com comparing quantities so they can really sense it from a concrete perspective and build towards the more abstract. So these are critical pieces that we look at in their assessing. And then it, and it continues and in, in grade two, the 10 frames assessment, that is one that we hope to see a lot more improvement. That's a, that's a model and a tool that's used universally now with all of our students. And it really helps them organize their structures for seeing 10, that we have a base 10 number system. It's critical that we build everything around 10. And, oh, the dismissal. So, we really look at the data for dismissal and in math and reading both, I think we're in that 70% range. And, and those students that aren't being dismissed, for a variety of, they need more developmental time. They may have been lagging really a lot more coming into it. Uh, they may not get as much time with the support if they're being pulled into more than one support area. So we really try to juggle that all and get them to the best place they can be. But if they need more support, they will continue on the following year and not be screened again if they didn't get dismissed. And then this is the, uh, the middle school reading. So we had 37 uh, students that were dismissed through title reading last year and you can see the criteria that we had. They had to meet three out of the four. Right. We tried something new this year and our data doesn't look quite as robust as we had in previous years. Um, we've always sent out a paper pencil version of uh, the, the parent survey at the end of the year and it asked questions such as like, did you come to conferences? Um, was the information that we sent home valuable to you? Um, were you able to contact the Title I teacher easily? Um, did you work daily with your child when it came to reading? Because we send um, books home for the kids to read on a daily basis. And um, did you attend like our family literacy night that we always have at the high school in November? Did you attend any of those literacy events? Um, we sent the survey monkey home because it was very cumbersome because like Doug said, some of the students we service in reading and math, and then it was shuffling all those papers. We're like, let's use some technology this year and let's try that. Um, we didn't get as many of the things returned and it was harder for us to track who had returned and who had not. So um, we're gonna look at how we can maybe do that just a little bit different um, in the structure of how we set survey monkey up next year so um, our, our numbers do look quite a bit lower than last year but a lot of that really just has to do with the technology piece um, we did email or we did send hard copies home to parents that we did not have email addresses on um, so we're, we're hoping that we get a little bit better results next year on our surveys but most of the parents like the ones that were returned we did find out that you know um, parents were satisfied and and um, that it was easy to contact teachers if they had any questions so. And I think in math, the one question that we have, in, in reading it was 91%, I think, in the daily reading, but we only have a third of our respondents and telling us that they're doing daily math with their children at home in this category. But yet, in our involvement, it still you know, fluctuates like it has in the past. Last year, everything jumped up, 
and we're still trying to figure that out as to why that would be. But that we need more involvement on the daily math, and, and I think we, as we've talked as a group, we, we're not sure, but we keep sending things home. We need to find better ways to communicate with the parents on that and get their involvement in the math. The reading seemed very good on a daily basis, but the math, there are so many things they can do daily, especially with, uh, with the new program that they're getting things daily. So I think that will make a difference as well. Any questions? So are there any questions? Thank you very much. Again, enjoy your presentation, and it's good to, to know what you're doing for students. I think this is that, you know, the four questions, what do we want our students to know, when, how will we know if they know it, what will we do if they don't, and this just helps to support that because we really do believe every student um, can learn and with the right tools will learn. So thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Okay, then moving on to enrollment report. Julie. <clears throat> Good evening. Um, my report tonight is to give you some information on our third Friday enrollment for the 2013-2014 school year. This year, our third Friday was September 20th, 2013. All students who were enrolled and present in our classrooms on that day were counted. This includes students who are open enrolled into our district. This count represents the number of students used to determine staffing projections, material purchases, and facility space. However, the student head count is different than the count reported to DPI for funding purposes. <coughs> this chart represents the number of students that attended and were counted on September 20th, 2013, our head count. This count is used for staffing materials, facility space purposes. While our enrollment increased, it wasn't at the rate that we had projected. This chart represents the student headcount enrollment growth from 2012-13 to 2013-14. We continue to grow in enrollment. Remember that it is not the headcount that is used for funding purposes. Full-time equivalency is used for determining the average daily membership which is different than counting the number of students in class, or our head count. The FTE is the result of taking the student count and applying a factor of less than one to 4K students and early childhood special education students since they do not attend all day. In addition, open enrolled students both in and out are factored into the calculation along with tuition waivers in and out of the district. The FTE is what determines our level of funding. Our 2013-14 uh, September FTE is 3,934. This is 34 students more than originally forecasted in our revenue limit calculations. Our summer school count was 64, resulting in a combined net increase of 49. This increase is somewhat mitigated by the three-year average computation used in the formula to create the current average. The current average in July was 3,860, whereas the new revised current average is 3,873, an increase of 13 in the FTE average. What financial impact does this have on us? With all other things being equal, our revenue limit formula will be increased by $131,000. We continue to experience more students open and rolling out than in, which has been a consistent trend. As you can see, we experienced an increase in the number of students open and rolling into the district as well. Some things that we know about our families who choose schools outside of Holman, we know that most of them are open and rolling out to neighboring districts. We know that about 8% are open enrolling to virtual schools. 20% of our open enrolled students are four-year-old kindergarten children. 
We also know that about 50% or more of our 4K students who have open enrolled out return for kindergarten. In an effort to better understand the reasons that our families are choosing districts other than Holman, we sent a survey asking families why they had chosen another district. The one question survey was sent to all families who open enroll their children out of the district. We also surveyed families who open enroll into the district with a one question survey. 59 surveys were returned. 48 were from families who open enroll their children out of the district. Of those 48, 26 were from families who, uh, whose child attends 4K. Parents indicated reasons such as continuing their current daycare or that their current daycare offers four-year-old kindergarten. 14 of these 26 indicated that they will be returning to Holman for kindergarten. Some other reasons that families choose other districts. When they move into the district, they choose to have their children continue to attend the district from which they came. Parents want their children to attend the district in which they work. Parents are choosing virtual education. And there are others who are looking for more attention to things like TAG, athletics, within district choice, and the option to repeat four-year-old kindergarten. We also received a few responses from parents who have chosen homeschooling and private placement. Of those parents who are open enrolling their children into our district, we received 12 responses. Those parents indicate many of the same reasons as those who open enroll out, such as daycare, convenience that Holman is, is set between places such as Tremplow and Galesville and Onalaska and La Crosse. Uh, one parent works in Holman. They've been pleased with the education provided to their children here, and so they enroll younger, their younger siblings. We also had some parents indicate that they themselves were Holman grads and want their children to attend here. Even though there continues to be a gap between the open enroll out and in requests, our overall student uh, enrollment continues to grow. We know that we must look for ways to address the needs of those families that are choosing to open enroll out. Questions you have? Are there any questions? Thank you, Julie. Lots of good answers. Looking for those answers on that, I think that's come up, so I appreciate that. Welcome. Um, then the next item is the truck purchase. Mr. Daly. Hello again. <clears throat> Um, I've got a little show. Um, all right. Um, I'm asking the board tonight to, uh, to allow me to present and approve this purchase. While we usually present on one board meeting and approve on the next, used vehicles have been, have been an exception. Um, I've actually been working with this one. I actually kind of made a commitment to it just before the last board meeting. So it's been about three weeks they've been holding this truck for us. Um, we've been looking for a replacement for our truck for some time um, and, and have uh, chosen this one. And, and, and I'm sorry, the, the header on this says it's a truck bid. It really wasn't a bid. Whenever we have a purchase uh, for uh, used equipment, we have a protocol we follow. Uh, when we look for those vehicles, we compare. Hopefully there's a Kelly Blue Book we do a life cycle cost on new versus used. Um, and in this case, we've chosen to, to, to purchase a used vehicle. Um, Jay called me today and asked me if I was gonna present. I, yeah, I'm gonna present this. And should I get some pictures? Jay thought, yes, I, I, I was a little uneasy in showing pictures of our old van, but <laughs> we're gonna kind of show you one of this, why we need to replace this thing. This one is a 1999 truck we've owned for about 10 years. Uh, prior to that truck, we actually used a cattle truck to haul uh -huh. heavy stuff around, a con kind of a converted cattle truck. And this truck has seen as condition is very, very, very poor uh, to the point of being almost dangerous to drive. This is uh, the step well getting into the driver's side. This is a uh, duct tape kind of holding the steering column together. I, I remember, uh, 
I remember, I think this is probably one of the first vehicles Dr. Carlson drove when he came here. We had a, a food pantry <coughs> event, I think, I don't know if it was in Central, somewhere down La Crosse. Down La Crosse, right? Yeah, we had duct tape holding the, the, <laughs> the uh, glove box shut at that time. Um, um, and, and quite honestly, um, we can't get parts for it. And a lot of times we can't get parts for it. And, and it, quite honestly, it just needs to go. Um, this is the floorboard right below the driver's seat. Uh, our courier driver, Randy, had to use this for, for a while while his was getting fixed. It rained one day and he got pretty wet on the, <laughs> on the legs. So this is the proposed replacement uh, that we looked for some time. We actually looked at other options. You know, could we do this without having to buy a van? Could we use a trailer? And, and, uh, but because of the lift capacity in the back and, and the capacity of the, tr of the truck bed itself, with the stuff that we use this for, from moving furniture, supplies, bulk paper on pallets, staging and folding chairs from one building to the next, custodial equipment, softener salt, ice melt, really heavy stuff. Um, this is really the best option. And we're not the only ones who use this. The IT department has used this truck for picking up computer equipment when they get their free computers from, or donated computers from Gunderson. We've used it to haul play props from community theater and other districts to our to our building and back power lift people use this for hauling equipment uh, same for the wrestling team and uh, track equipment and then of course as I mentioned this is used for courier services um, when when that truck is is down for repair or service so um, this is a 2007 GMC van 120,000 miles which for this kind of truck is pretty low miles because we would only put two or three thousand miles on the, on this truck a year, the asking price was twenty one nine. The sale price nineteen nine uh, by La Crosse Truck Center, and this is the action item for tonight and uh, the copy of the issue paper that you have before you. So, looking for approval for that tonight. If you got any questions, please let me know and, and thank me. Thank you for allowing me to present this tonight. So, John, is our old van a 92 or a 99? 99. Okay. And the issue paper says it's a 92. Oh. So I was just wondering. I think, uh, I thought it was. It doesn't matter. It's might old. Be, it's might old. Be. It's, it's old. old. It's old. It's, it's old. It's all that matters. It's, the visuals it's say it all. It, it really does. <laughs> it really does. So this is on the consent agenda this evening. Anyone have any questions? If not, then it will come up then. And thank you, Mr. Daly, thank for you. presenting. Thank you. And then the last item under reports and discussion, Mr. Miller on paper bids. Good evening. Good evening. In your re reports tonight, uh, we're presenting a corrected uh, paper bid, and uh, this is to uh, revise the accurate uh, amounts and dates uh, from the last uh, school board meeting. And the upshot of this uh, change is that there is a, a reduction in the cost of about $1,100, about a 5% decrease, and there's no change in the uh, name of the awarded bidder. So that is it for uh, business services tonight. Okay, so any questions on this? Okay, and this will be on the consent agenda items. So moving on to board, board member reports and discussion. I'll call on board members in order of roll call so they can present any comments or committee reports they have. Um, I'm going to steal a little funder. I usually go last, but I just wanted, I know you're all gonna congratulate Cullen on being named homecoming king. Congratulations, it was great, some great pictures I saw of that happening and um, I'm sure you had a, represented the district well, so, but it was really fun I bet to be crowned by the first king, homecoming king ever, so that was very interesting to hear. So, Mr. Gittins. Congratulations, Colin. Thank you. No further comments. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mrs. Jagosinski. Congratulations, Colin. I, I did watch that um, on the news, I believe, it was on, on TV. So, yeah, I watched that. It was very entertaining to see, and what an honor to be crowned by the first homecoming king. Um, and you looked really humble in the background, too. You were standing like that, so good job. Um, the only other thing I really have is that Cheryl and I had a personnel and governance committee meeting um, with the rest of the committee last Wednesday and um, we also attended uh, the regional yearly WASB region 6 meeting 
uh, in Toma last when no what day was it Tuesday Tuesday last Tuesday with um, Kate and Lisa and Dale attended also so got a lot of good information there made for a very long day because we went from four o'clock till about a little after nine but um, very worthwhile and I would highly encourage some year for all of our board to attend that would that's my goal for next year so mark your calendars guys we all need to show up team effort and that's all I have okay and then mm -hmm. um, mr. Trivet. well thank you all for the uh, congratulations and then with the homecoming theme I just want to thank all the different uh, students staff and community members that helped out making the week such a success uh, just from a student standpoint it looked like everyone was enjoying themselves from the different events at lunch for the grade competitions and then finally like the big assembly at the end with the first homecoming king and queen coming in it was quite a week and everything went really well so just thank you everyone for that thank you and then mrs collins i just want to say congratulations to you Ellen. it's pretty cool thank you mr dunlap uh to quote mel brooks it's good to be king <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have a granddaughter who was, who was a freshman, <coughs> and she really enjoyed the homecoming festivities. And, and uh, I want to thank everybody because she, she had a great time. She felt real safe. Um, she never thought about any kind of trouble or anything in getting in trouble, or everything went really smooth. And, and uh, she had a great time. And I congratulate the football team on their great season so far. They got a, another game left. That was a real battle, a real war they had down at Logan. And, Logan should be congratulated for how hard they played against uh, the Holman team, the two great teams. Um, being part of the Holman School District Web Police, I'd like to make sure everybody takes a look at their web pages and get them up to date. <coughs> I, I check them uh, pretty often during the year to make sure everybody's keeping up to date. And there's a few of them that are getting behind now again. And um, appreciate everybody getting caught up. But uh, every time I mention it, it seems like everybody kind of gets back up to speed. So take a look and make sure everything's up to date. That's all I have, thanks. Thank you. Um, and then I also would um, just mention the School Board Association meeting. Not only did we um, go to the four o'clock workshop, which talked about roles and responsibilities, and I know one of the things that we, of school board members, I'm sorry, but one of the things that we believe about providing for our students is lifelong learning, is that they would value lifelong learning. And I think as a school board, we can serve as an example that when there are these professional development opportunities to take advantage of them because it was very good. I know for some of the newer board members, it, it um, help them understand roles and responsibilities and just some of the issues that we've been faced with as a board for some of those who have more experience it was a good reminder of some of those things and it all they also talked about the the changing trends and some of the responsibilities and, and how act 10 may has effect may have affected that and different legislation may have affected that so it was a it, you know even though it sounds like something we may have heard many years ago um, it's always good to to take advantage of that and personnel and governance um, even some of the stuff that we're talking about there um, those things were covered at the WASB meeting that we had and we heard from the Onalaska School District and they're doing PLCs as a school board not only you know we have been doing professional learning communities with our teaching staff and, and administrators have been doing that but the school board has been doing that and it's something for us to think about and consider and maybe we'll discuss it in November where they've done some book learning and um, where they've had assignment assigned reading um, they have then taken <coughs> that and used that to they went from having um, like 15 goals I think he said as a district down to three and on all three of their goals are about student learning period that's what the school board is there for that's what the staff is there for is student learning so it was just very good to hear from other districts and how they're doing things and what they're doing and and that that's the value of going to those is the ability to interact with them so and then just some of the other things that we have on we've had on our agenda the compensation model the um, new educator effectiveness models that are coming down those things were also shared with us in some updates so um, good stuff happening um, and I know I would just mention that Dale did share that the CESA meeting this Thursday has been canceled so if any of you were thinking about going 
Um, they, I don't know if they're planning to reschedule or um, if it was just canceled this fall. I think it was probably too close to the WASB meeting. I would note that we do have um, another board meeting in October on the 28th, and we've got the two meetings in November, but on November 5th, we have the workshop beginning at 530. Um, and then December 9th, we have a board meeting and we have a board meeting scheduled for December 23rd. So that is really it for that. The next item is just consent agenda item. I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items as presented, unless someone would like to pull any individual item out. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? So moved. Is there a second? Any discussion on any of those items? Seeing none, all of those um, in favor of approving the consent agenda items as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. And then I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of adjourning, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Nay. Motion carries. We are adjourned.